Regenerator Spender is just a term where you use one ability, in this case we'll use Mana Strike, to regenerate or recover our mana pool. And then we'll use another ability, Shatter Strike, in order to spend that. And you repeat this process over and over as needed. Mana Strike is arguably the best generator for any class or mastery within the entire game. Not only do you have incredibly fast attack speed with this particular setup, but the skill itself and the specialization tree allow for additional mana regeneration. The Spellblade is incredibly fun to play, despite being perhaps the least flashy of all the mage masteries. This is not a one button build. In fact, you'll use all the abilities on your loadout and even a sixth ability will proc automatically. It's just very difficult to really discern any of the skills aside from Shatter Strike, and that gives the appearance of a one button build. This version is a mid-range build that uses melee skills which will allow us to maintain the generator spender playstyle while staying a bit safer thanks to the improved range. If you're tired of sacrificing important stats for mana regeneration on other builds, this is an excellent choice as well, since the resource or mana generator portion of the build is more efficient than any other skill in the game. There's also a lot of flexibility within the build. You can keep Mana Strike as a pure melee ability to recover even more mana when you use it. You can play this as a direct damage build as shown in this video, or you can use it as a dot or damage over time build thanks to the amazing attack speed and number of stacks that it can generate. There's several nodes that not only grant mana, but you also gain ward. And this is vital because we're gonna use a very fast attack speed in order to keep the mana regeneration and the ward up to keep our character alive. You can further boost the generation that you get from the mana just from a node called Mana Drain. On top of that, you can gain mana when you crit, and you can convert Mana Strike's base critical chance to an increased 40%, which is absolutely massive. You'll no longer get Critical Strike Multiplier. Since Shatter Strike is our spender, the damage you deal with Mana Strike is pretty irrelevant. To further the setup, I've actually gone with a mid-range build as mentioned in the intro. We're going to use Rage Sap, which allows us to deal increased global damage, meaning that our Shatter Strikes will deal more damage. That allows us to get access to Teleporting Strikes. Teleporting Strikes doesn't actually teleport your character, it just allows Mana Strike to become ranged. This comes at the cost of 80% reduced mana generation for the build. Mana Strike is so strong that you're actually able to play this build with this talent node taken. You can also take Star Guide, which means that if you play on controller, you don't even need to turn the joystick. It'll just automatically turn your character and hit the closest enemy. One strategy you can use is to go through the Monolith and get all the way up into the boss, or possibly even farm some additional stability so that you can do the boss multiple times in a row and then respect the character, removing Star Guide and teleporting strikes that allow you to get better mana regeneration for the bosses in which you'll have higher DPS uptime and do more damage to kill them quicker. At the conclusion of killing the boss once or twice, whatever you prefer, you can then respec into those points as you gain them as you complete the beginning echoes again. This of course isn't needed and the gameplay I've shown for you actually has these talents still activated just to show you that you can still kill the boss without any difficulty. Before we move on from Mana Strike, I do want to mention the damage over time variant that was brought up in the intro. In this situation, we only have about a 25% chance to bleed. You can see that just above or to the side of my head there. 25% is very low. If you were playing an ailment build, you would most likely be stacking several hundred percent chance. However, with such a fast attack speed, we can easily acquire a number of stacks here. In this case, we get about 15 or so really quickly. That means we'd have roughly 60 with a 100% chance for that particular ailment. Most damage over time builds are gonna stack several hundred percent chance of whichever ailment you're going for. So you could easily get several hundred stacks or more very quickly with this particular setup. That'll allow your mana strike not only to recover mana, but to also do some meaningful damage as well. Whereas in the direct damage setup that we're showing in this video, the mana strike damage compared to say that of Shatter Strike, really pretty negligible. That brings us to the first couple of gear choices that you may be looking at for this particular build. Snowdrift is an excellent chance if you want to apply Frostbite on hit. Additional 31% chance is basically going to double what we just saw. The additional cold penetration for Frostbite means more damage, and additional cold damage with spells and attacks is also useful. We are running Frostclaw in this setup, and this counts as a spell. This will automatically proc on its own, just dealing some additional damage. Overall, for bosses, it doesn't do a ton of damage, but it's really nice for clearing out some of the fodder while you're running through Echoes. Keep in mind that this counts as a hit, so when this is proccing automatically, if you have any chance to hit or apply ailments, you'll get benefit from that as well. You'll see here that we actually lose damage when we equip Snowdrift, and that's because we actually get so much benefit from just raw stats in this build. Shadow Strike benefits from both Dexterity and Intelligence, so we can stack two main stats for big damage. That means a pair like Blood of the Exile or even just a well-rolled Exalted will be solid choices in the boot slot for the direct damage version. Shard of the Shattered Lance is an excellent weapon choice and very easy to acquire as well until you happen to find a really good exalted or possibly unique item with legendary potential. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Shard of the Lance offers flat melee cold damage and a lot of it at that. You also get an additional percentage of increased melee cold damage. You could even choose to pair this with the Fragments of the Shattered Lance Relic, also easily acquired, in order to get more additional boost based on your health regen. 
ultimately these options will actually get replaced later on but they're very good starter choices if you want to get this build up and running all right let's jump into some gameplay for anybody who's still watching after i recommended some set items for a build in the last epoch this is generator spender so we're going to look to spend our mana or resource whenever possible in order to do some burst damage as it gets low we'll look to use mana strike to recover that mana and repeat the process you can use teleport offensively or defensively whichever is needed at the moment it's got a relatively short cooldown so you can really use it for both purposes. It'll also give you an additional boost to your damage. So keep that in mind when you're bossing. If you want to position yourself, get some additional damage output. Enchant Weapon hasn't been talked about yet either. It's really difficult. I'm going to run over to the corner. Really difficult to see this on the live gameplay. But this will also increase your damage. You can pair that with the teleport. And then essentially just spend all your mana out to nuke down objectives. This works really well when bossing as well. Flame Ward is unspecialized. And that's the final skill on the loadout. We're going to specialize Frost Claw, or you could alternatively use Barrage. They both essentially do the same function, just some additional damage. The difference is Frost Claw will proc automatically, Barrage you would activate manually, and then it will continue to channel around your character if you specialize into that. Both really effective. They'll provide additional ailments or just chance on hit, help you recover or apply debuffs like Frailty, which are really good armor shred for this particular build, and so forth. Here we'll move into an objective. We'll go ahead and get the enchant weapon up. Work on nuking it down. If we need any mana, we can do so from ranged. And just playing the ranged version of Mana Strike, although it recovers less mana, it just adds to the defensive layers of this build. Find it the higher corruption. Being melee is really a disadvantage, unfortunately, and there aren't many melee builds that I would recommend if you're looking to push the corruption. Let's take a minute to talk about weapon choices. In this character, we're using swords, and the reason for that is one of the nodes within Shadow Strike. We'll take a look at that node specifically in just a second. However, when it comes to unique swords, there aren't a ton of options. Melee attack speed is very important for this build, whether you're running the direct damage or the damage over time variant. The faster you attack, the faster you'll be able to recover your mana pool and get back to Shattering Strike, or the faster you'll be able to keep up those stacks and deal more damage with the damage over time variant. You could look for unique weapons that have legendary potential and then hope to graft the melee attack speed onto it. However, it's even more effective if you find a unique weapon that has attack speed and then get additional attack speed for the legendary potential. That being said, there aren't a tremendous amount of choices that offer melee attack speed on a unique sword. So we're kind of limited in the options. And unless you're really lucky or happen to be able to pick one of these up through, say, the Merchant's Guild, you'll have difficulty finding a weapon that is better than a well-rolled exalted. Well-rolled exalted swords, specifically crystal swords and katanas, are very good. Crystal sword is going to give you some increased melee elemental damage and increased melee attack speed for elemental abilities as well as the implicit. Katanas offer increased critical strike multiplier. All these are very powerful, and as mentioned, you could pick up a Shard of the Shattered Lance, much easier to acquire than some of the other unique options with legendary potential. The reason we're using swords is due to the node Cold Steel. This allows 120% critical strike multiplier per sword. That means you're getting 240% critical strike multiplier on your Shattered Strike while equipped with two swords. In the chest slot, you can look for a well-rolled exalted, similar to one that we have here. Intelligence, even dexterity works in that affix. You get increased melee elemental damage, increased armor for some survivability, and a bunch of bonus health are all really strong for this build. Run's Wisdom is also a great choice for a unique piece. It's actually what I prefer to run because the health is often over 65%. This adds a flat 30 melee cold damage, which then gets furthered through the sword that we're running. I don't see this item in a lot of builds, so you may be able to get one of these very cheaply if you happen to be in the Merchant's Guild as well. Bone Clamor Barbert is something I often run. This build actually runs full life and a little bit of ward, and we generate ward through our damaging abilities as well. So we kind of use a hybrid or a combination there in order to keep the character alive. This also offers dexterity and intelligent, two base stats that benefit both Mana Strike and the Shattered Strike. The remaining slots are all dedicated to capping the resist and increasing the cold damage. You'll see increased cold damage with some resist, not only on the implicits, but the affixes as well for the amulet. Rings with increased elemental damage. More importantly, this has got some resist that I happen to be lacking. Increased critical strike chance, very strong for mana strike to help cover even more mana. Plus, we get that 40% chance boost from the skill node. Belt increasing cold damage, additional health, necrotic resist, which can be difficult to cap. So this ring here, we're boosting dexterity. This is all the same as increasing intelligence. We don't quite get the benefit of the ward retention we do from intelligence, but for damage output, it does all the same thing. Cold damage and again, some resistances with an implicit boosting our critical strike chance. 
in the relic slot again look to boost the things that you're using we're running a cold version here we get cold damage on the implicit as well as one of the affixes intelligence as mentioned is strong additional health and applying frailty on hit is very nice this will reduce the damage that your character is taking as well and we can have means of applying this through things like frost claw that apply automatically as we use our other skills in the glove slot you can find a well rolled exalted with increased melee attack speed or you can look for unique like frostbite that has legendary potential and then hope to get that melee attack speed on it as well other important stats here will again be resist. You'll see I've stacked this again in the implicit and the affixes. For idle slots, look to cap your resistances as usual, and then look for things like increased critical strike chance, increased health percentage is really strong. For larger idols, you can get increased melee elemental damage, increased armor. The increased mana doesn't hurt us either, but it's not necessary because a large mana pool isn't essential for this build to function. The blessings are not fully optimized at this point. I'm still working on them. This character is only level 84 at the moment, and I'm still pushing through the corruption when they were empowered monoliths. I'm hoping to get this up past 300 and give you an updated version at that point. I've played enough characters and shown enough builds at this point that I generally have a feel of how far a build can go before it needs an update or revamp, so to speak. I'm pretty confident this will reach 300 plus without any changes. Afterwards, I think we may need to increase the survivability a little bit in order to push a little bit further, but I think that's more than doable as well. I'll leave screenshots for all the specialization and passive trees for your reference. There'll also be a link in the video description where you can view the build on Last Epoch Tools. Due to the length of the video, not every skill was covered in great detail, but if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them and I'm happy to share more reasoning. Reminder that on this channel, you don't need to leave comments about the actual video you're watching. It's no problem at all for me to answer questions about other builds if you think of them while watching this video. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch and have a great day.